So on these student interviews, uh, it's all uh, for the most part pretty uh, high level stuff, uh, how people got into agency life, uh, how they signed their first client, this, that. Uh, we don't go too much into the service delivery aspect of it. Um, but in this student interview, that's exactly what we're going to do because uh, Antonio is an absolute beast when it comes to advertising. and. Um, yeah, I thought, you know what, let's, uh, let's dig a little deeper. Let's talk about, um, you know, with a new client, uh, with a new e-commerce client, how do you actually structure the campaigns? How do you validate? How do you test? Um, what sort of things do you look out for when signing e-com clients, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, with no further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and roll this. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another student interview. You might notice something is a little different and that's because a Antonio, you probably won't see this, but on my side, I'm doing, I, I, what, what is this thing called? The no, this is the, the gallery view. Yeah, that's the one, the gallery view. So just drop in the comments down below whether you guys like the split screen uh, or you guys want me to go back to uh, speaker view, which is like whoever's talking. But anyways, long story short, uh, I'm excited to be joined here today with uh, agency incubator and copy paste agency student uh, Antonio. Um, and this man is just a wizard when it comes to advertising. Um, and like you are one of those people who... You're one of those people who like, we're going to have a conversation in a year and you're going to be at 10 to 20 X, what you are right now with your agency. Um, because man, you're just, you're on the ball, <laughs> you're on the ball. And, and at the moment, um, I mean, before you were getting really underpaid, now you're getting underpaid in my opinion for what you're worth <laughs> and in a year's time, you know, we'll get you where you're worth. But, um, yeah, do you want to just share a little bit about yourself? Um, how many clients you're working with, uh, your, your background, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so I started my agency one year ago, and I mean, literally delivering the service myself, spent over 100K in, uh, in Facebook ads for, for my clients, worked with over, I think it's around 35 uh, ad accounts so far, and uh, this has been mostly for local European markets, Eastern Europe, and just a few from the USA market. And uh, yeah, like like you said, I mean, I've been you know giving uh, giving prices a bit uh, <laughs> under the <laughs> under the normal score, and uh, yeah, it really uh, changed my paradigm uh, when I joined your course, and I I've seen that dude, these guys are charging like five times more, six times more, and some of the guys aren't even delivering the service themselves, so. You know, they aren't spending time on uh, on delivery and they are, I mean, <laughs> it's crazy. So, um, yeah, uh, I joined the agency incubator in, um, I think it was January or February because I wanted like a new, a new perspective on, on uh, how to do things differently because before I was doing a lot of uh, up work and I mean, it's good. It's good to get the ball rolling and, uh, you know, learn to de deliver services and um, get clients. I mean, actually make a transition from your full-time job, whatever you're doing, to the online space. But in order to scale to a more more professional thing, you, you just need to be better paid and Upwork may not be the pl best place to, to do that. So, um, yeah. And I also joined copy-paste agency around... Uh, I think one month ago or twenty days, and yeah, it's really been a really been a totally paradigm shift because um, it's been a, like a close close uh, tight community. Uh, I'm sure it will grow, but for now it's like you know less than agency incubator, so everyone gets uh, gets time on the um, on the calls and everything, and yeah uh i've been surprised on the level of um you know of the level of that my colleagues have in the in the group i mean <laughs> you told me like i asked you in the call that you what, what's the average income and you you you've uh, said some numbers and i was like yeah okay let me see if, if that is the truth or <laughs> and uh yeah i've been really surprised to, to see people really did, did, you, did you see that these do you see that agency owner who came in the other day? <laughs> He's working with a hundred clients, the one from Italy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> total, like, total beast. You guys are really, really making it uh, big in the agency. I mean, it's one thing when you see <laughs> YouTube videos or here around, but it's 
it's another thing when you actually see them live in the calls and talk with mm -hmm. them and it really brings up um, your perspective and uh, yeah what I wanted to point out maybe it's a good thing to share in those corona times uh, like before uh, before I joined copy paste like in two weeks before the whole corona thing uh, exploded I was like you know got slowly into the reading the news refreshing and uh, this kind of a bit messed with uh, with my mindset with all oh, crisis is coming and um, things are getting worse clients are dropping and uh, yeah I had a few clients in the local uh, industry such as fitness and uh, yoga and stuff like that and they dropped I mean uh, corona really took me like unexpected like clients dropped and um, that was a really really Know, shocking experience but then after um, joining CPA I've got myself in a more you know ultra accountability mode dropped all the all the news all the I, I, I mean I stopped watching anything related to, to it I've also actually implemented stuff from the agency incubator as well with elimination so I've eliminated the news feed and I mean especially now I think it's very important so you, you have your mind straight and uh yeah for the last uh, 20 days been really amazing i mean one of the clients that i got so it's in the i mean i can't say his name but it's in the top uh, 15 uh, brands in biotech for for usa like fastest growing biotech startups it's like really amazing american client uh like a small corporation most to say and um yeah so far it's been uh, <laughs> it's been amazing and uh yeah, i think you're telling the truth when when you're saying that in maybe 10 months from now 12 months i'll i'll literally kill it <laughs> no yeah exactly that's the thing right now i i know you're obviously you're working with three clients but i think you're told i mean i told you this when you you know i told you this when you came into carbon paste is like you're you yeah. should be char you don't even need to do anything like you don't need to because obviously in terms of like the actual results you're getting for your clients are killing it um you know you told me some of this couple examples with clients where you made them 25k a month return on ad spend uh, it was an info product business right yeah yeah so i mean like look you're like you think you're you're already getting clients great results you don't even just change anything it's literally just like that moment where you're like where you pitch the price and you're gonna say 1200 and last minute you, you, you last minute you just have faith um in your service in your price point and you just say 2500 instead of 1200 uh or you say uh, let's say you're going to charge them 1800 you go 4k um you know because quite clearly you have the or even better 1500 plus 20 percent return on ad spend with that 25k client that would have been an extra five grand in, in billables yeah. um so 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 you know one thing that uh, you've done very well is obviously you're, you're great on the advertising side of things. Um, question to you, how long did it take you to go from learning Facebook ads to being like, okay, yeah, I, I, cause I feel as though every agency owner has that point initially where they're like, ah, oh, man, even if I, like they want to sign the client, but they're like, what if I don't get them results until you got to a point where you're like, no, no, I know I'm going to kill it. You know, that that's, that's a more of a self-confidence thing. And mm. I think you never reach that point. I mean, when, when you say like you're 100% sure, I mean, it's a, it's a more of a mind thing that, you know, your mind tells you, oh, this is a new client in a new e company, so you may not get results for him. So it's a more of a doubt that I think every agency owner has. But I mean, you, you just, just need to look backwards and see all the results. I think I had the you know the the biggest mind shift where where i've worked with uh uh with an ecom client and i mean i basically went from uh, spending um you know 10 3 no like 2 to 5k a month then i took this ecom client and i started uh with uh, 50k a month <laughs> so i was like you know a 10x uh, increase but I managed to I managed to do it. I also had some help from the client, which was a bit kind of my mentor because he was already doing the ads himself. 
and that really helped. But once you, you know, go there and, um, you know, test the water, it actually gets more comfortable for you. So you just need to go out there and, you know, just take the client and um, try delivering the results. And that's how you get to the perceived uh, confidence because it's mostly about how you perceive your, uh, your skill rather than what it is exactly. So, uh, yeah, I think it took like uh, two, two or three clients in e-commerce. Uh, and the funny thing is uh, I've had clients where I had doubts that I could uh, obtain results for them, but I followed my process and the results were great. So, uh, I mean... So, it, what is your process? Um, so... Um, well, it depends on the client. I mean, if, if it's a new client or the client already runs campaign. If it's a new client, we, we start with a validation campaign. We, we run eight to nine ad sets. Um, we have one interest per ad set and maybe $100 per day. Uh, like to get the so let, let, me, let me just say that. I, so let me just say that. I, so we got one cold campaign. We got eight to nine different ad sets. Well, obviously, you're doing what I teach and what it... So like 99% of advertisers out there don't understand. Uh, I still find it very uh, humorous as I've, I've mentioned this so many times before, but when I see uh, advertisers out there and they're not, they don't realize that at the ad set level, it's a scientific experiment. Like you're trying to extrapolate what is the one variable that if I change, we're getting a better result. So as you said, one interest per ad set, that's how you actually know what is and isn't working. You can't mix different ad interests or change the demographic for different ad sets. So yeah. One cold campaign, nine ad sets, and you set around, depending on the client budget, but sometimes 900, uh, sorry, 100 per ad set or 100 per for the campaign, for the cold campaign. So for, for the whole campaign um, and uh, one interest, at least 500K in uh, audience size and yeah, broad uh, placements, broad uh, ages. And that's one thing that I learned like from copy paste uh, from Danny, like he mentioned about the pro broad thing, and I started implementing that, and I've noticed like 20% decrease in uh, in CPM. Before I was like split testing, you know, I mean, if I sell a baby product, then I would target, you know, moms from uh, 30 or 30 to 50. But actually, the algorithm is smarter than you. So if you leave, uh, if you leave all ages, then they will actually go from 30 to 50. So the, the result is the same, but if you put the age manually, then they will charge like 20% more, you know, because, oh, you're more sophisticated, than, you know, let's charge this guy. And uh, yeah, that's for like a new campaign. And for um, for clients who, who, are, who are already doing uh, doing things what i do is uh, i export the table data i mean th this is a thing that i haven't seen a lot of advertisers do i have a bit of a background in like like data stuff and i like to analyze data so what i do i you're, you remind me a lot of danny <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh so i export the table data and i upload it upload it to google uh, google sheets and then you can actually do all, all, a lot of analyze and uh, analyze. So basically, you go breakdown and you try to to go breakdown by um, ages, by placements, by everything. So from that data, you can uh, figure out which creatives were were better. Maybe you would go for Instagram stories more, or uh, you would. Uh, I mean, it's not for defining the placement, but for defining your client avatar so then you can um, redefine your copywriting and your whole thing and then you have like a nice excel report with uh, you know ROAS breakdown by by country and all that cool stuff and i mean every client was impressed by that no nobody, nobody delivers this and um based on that i i basically restructured their current campaign um i also look a lot at the ctr to see if the if the copy is good and I basically do a double check if things are going right but most of the time things aren't going right i mean that's why they they bring us to to fix something so uh, most of the time we we do the whole thing and we start with the validation again and test new interests and uh, with new creative new copy 
and um, take it all from zero because some clients just do randomly. Oh, let's start a you know a engagement campaign and uh, hope it will get sales or do some random stuff there. Um, actually, had a client now that start that we the client that we started working uh, like 20 days ago. They were doing like two ROAS, two two point two point something ROAS. And it was bad, actually under two, and they had some random campaigns running. It was a mess. So we stopped that and we started new campaigns all over with new copy, new creatives, everything. And the ROAS uh, has been around four. So yeah, it's sometimes it's just better to start from zero with your um, with your own process rather than um, uh, go with the client's process. And it's not complicated to do Facebook ads. I mean, I think it's more of a, you know, being organized and having the right principles and then just applying stuff and being uh, disciplined about it, checking it, I mean, optimizing. But as long as you do this, and also, you know, the copy creative, which are, you know, mandatory for every online business, like having decent copy, I mean, your module, uh, your uh, copywriting module talk, talks about this. So um, it's very easy to learn copywriting when you're doing um, when you're doing ads because the feedback loop is very, you know, in one day you can learn if your copy is, is better. So in three months you'll be, you know, very good at copyright. <laughs> you meant you've meant, mentioned Danny as well, you know, learning copy very fast. So that's one of the reasons that. He learned it so fast. Mm. Mm. Okay, so that was, yeah, I mean, all of that was super, super interesting. I know um, audience 100% found a lot of value from that. My next question to you is, I know that you've had, and granted you have, I don't think you've had um, uh, enough time to validate it yet, but between, uh, what's your opinion on percentage of ROAS, base plus percentage of ROAS, or just a set retainer between those three different pricing models? Um, so with the info product line that I had, uh, a percentage of ROAS, I mean, would have been the best uh, best thing ever. And that's what actually I proposed to the client. But you know, when you start with a fixed fee and then you try uh, going to a percentage model, it, it, it sometimes doesn't work because you know your perceived work uh, has this amount of money and when you when you try to do it differently then you know the client changes uh the perception I mean, yeah plus plus the client can already do the math if they know in that first month you've made them 25k and you're like oh, okay let's let's move to uh let's move to like uh 20 percent ROAS. that sounds fair which is totally fair by the way um but then they're like oh okay well fuck you now we're paying you 5k a month so um yeah exactly so uh i mean I took the info product client uh, because I just wanted to learn more about the, the whole thing. And I didn't have experience uh, at that time. So, you know, I, I didn't, uh, you know, had the confidence, so to say. But if I had, you know, maybe fake confidence and would have uh, charged the money, then it would have been a great result. But nonetheless, it was a great experience. So I think it's, it's good if the info product client it's actually you know a proven model like a validated uh, proven model otherwise it may not work i get sometimes approached by local clients so uh, let me give you like a percentage of uh, of profit but when the client starts with that then it's clearly that you know the, their business has some uh, <laughs> some holes and mm -hmm. they just expect some uh, miracle and they will just oh, uh, do you know revenue uh, sharing, but if we not uh, get any revenue, then we're not going to pay you, but it's fair, you know, but it's actually not fair. <laughs> so uh, the fixed price plus, plus revenue, I think it's a, I think it's a great, great model uh, with the right businesses. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I totally agree there. Now, when you're looking for uh, e-commerce clients, what are, are you know, what, what are some main things that you look out for as in they could be a good client or they could be qualified, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Yeah. So I could definitely answer this because I think I've worked with all the bad type of clients. I mean, you know, one of the reasons that, uh, uh, 
my my agency is where it is because my recurring rate and uh yeah my basically the what's called the number of months of uh, that the client stays in was low but not because the services were not good but because of their business was wasn't stable enough so uh mm -hmm. i wouldn't work with uh, drop shipping businesses that's like from the start because they have like high uh, high shipping times and they have other business problems that they need to handle and their whole um, you know cash flow process is a bit of a mess because you know if their paypal or uh, stripe is getting blocked then their whole business is down so they're one email away from uh closing their whole business so um um yeah well, one of the things that uh uh i resonate with and i also seen this in your uh, cpa module i think module four or something um it's having like working with legit brands you know brands who have a good social media presence i mean brands that you would uh let your mom mom buy from you know <laughs> <laughs> you know or telling a friend about this brand you know mm. usually if it's a drop shipping you would be like oh you know you need to double check those guys with the shipping and everything but if it's like yeah. a nice looking brand legit i think that's one main criteria uh another criteria um is to have like a active social media presence so they're actually active when you're like prospecting uh you see that this brand was active so it's not a brand that is uh inactive so you're gonna spend your time sending a loom or prospecting and they're actually you know inactive for like three four months um initially i was looking for uh there's a tool a uh, cool tool called similar web and if you go on the website then it shows you the, um, the monthly visitors but it doesn't work for all of the sites so yeah, you can do some math there to see if they're actually making some revenue and figure out if it's worth approaching or not. But for now, I've tried to remove that from my process because similar web doesn't work for all of the websites and it doesn't tell you exactly if they're good or not, depending on the traffic. So it may be a good client. If it has low traffic, maybe they have like high budgets from an investor or something like that. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, understood. Um, man, yeah, I think this has been awesome because I've, I've, I've loved uh, being able to get quite technical with you. Um, my last question to you is what does the rest of 2020 look like for you and your agency? Okay. Apart from uh, charging more. <laughs> So far, um, yeah, so far in like first month of uh, CPA, I've managed to also get the media buyer in my team, which was a thing that, you know, at my highest peak, I couldn't uh, take more projects because I couldn't deliver. So it's like a catch 22, you know, you take more clients, but you cannot uh, find the media buyer then because it takes time. So I took the time now to implement that advice that you gave me in the, I think maybe the first Q&A of C cpa and uh yeah the, the rest of 2020 how i perceive it at the moment um i'm gonna focus uh more on uh, onboarding usa and europe e-commerce clients and info product i continue the prospecting in terms of uh, having a stable lead generation and that's one thing uh, another thing i want to implement more of from your um social media module from CPA, like having a, mm. like a, what's called like social media brand, you know, for, for getting, yeah, uh, b b b uh, building a niche authority, personal brand. So that way, whatever your yeah. advertising efforts are, whatever your outreach efforts are, whatever your efforts are, uh, efforts are via um, driving traffic to case study funnel and generating leads via Google or Facebook, which is obviously what we cover a lot of in um, CPA, uh, whatever that is, whatever effectiveness that has doubling that effectiveness by also having a niche authority personal brand, because these days people are going to look you up. Now, when you're first starting, it doesn't matter. Like just, just outreach. That's the most important thing is getting volume. But at a certain point it, it, it makes sense to build up a bit of a personal brand. 
Yeah, and one more thing that I want to focus on maybe in Q3 or something, maybe at the end of the summer, I, I want to go like for a trip in South America and probably live for like two or three months, maybe meet with Danny and some other guys in <laughs> Colombia. Uh, and uh, t Temple uh, Temple is in Colombia as well right now. Oh, nice. I, I, I've seen him on Instagram. Uh, yeah, yeah that, that's like the the mindset that I have now for the rest of the year. Yeah, I think it's going to be, you know, uh, great in terms of like perspective. I mean, it really opened my perspective with CPA. Uh, I mean, seeing so many guys that are killing it all over the world, uh, this, in, in spite of the whole uh, crisis thing, I mean, perceived crisis. So it's not actually a crisis, so it's, I think the best time to take some uh, some e-commerce clients not all of them i mean it's still an issue for some but for for others it's still a great business mm -hmm. all right awesome well yeah dude i just want to thank you for your time uh i know this has been a, a, a for most people like uh first most of the student interviews we keep a kind of high level uh talk about more uh, experiential stuff but I, fucking enjoyed geeking out um and, and getting a little more nitty-gritty with you so uh yeah dude thank you so much for your time yeah thanks as well